Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. Monday show. Mondays are for political discussions. Wednesdays are the educative segment of the show. And Fridays are for Bible talks. We just had a very powerful, a very interesting Bible talks this past Friday uh, discussing the personality of God. We did part two of the series and we were discussing to be specific. God is strong, uh, which we shall definitely continue this week. Hope you guys check that one out. If you did not, then you can check it out um, on the channel. Fridays are for Bible Talks, Wednesdays, educative segment, and Mondays are the political segment of the show, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. I know I've given you uh, everything in jumbled order, but I hope you get it. The show is available right here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 20 hours Central African time. And the podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And today is the Monday show, political segment of the show. I hope you guys subscribed. If you're not, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. We enjoy your participation in the channel, whether it be subscriptions, likes, comments, shares. We welcome all of you. We enjoy it. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed uh, in recent times that we haven't officially welcomed to the channel. We have officially clocked a year of doing the show. and. Yeah, it's been a quite uh, interesting journey, a learning curve. We hope to improve with every single episode as we go forward. Yeah, I'm here with Mr. Chofaya on the show. (laughs) How are you doing, sir? I'm strong. You're strong. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. We had a subject called God is Strong this past Friday. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Interesting usage of the words. (laughs) Yeah. So, but uh, not just strong, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> strong, stronger yeah. human being a stronger human being eh? <laughs> look at yeah, that yeah, yeah 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 okay but you had a good week stronger good weekend man. yeah yeah i saw pictures of you at the kwamboka it's like people go to every traditional ceremony now we had the same faces at nchwala that we saw at the at the kwamboka and i'm sure we'll see the same faces at the we only have 20 million Zambians, so who do you expect to see? Do, I know. And we have I know. 72 tribes of ethnic groups. Yeah. Uh, 72 ethnic groups. Oh, wow. 72 uh, in a population of 20 million. Eh? Mm. Mm. So, so yeah. not, not too many. Not too, the, big, the groups are not that big. Mm. What do you That's think is probably the, the tribe with the largest population? Hmm. You see, such things, they are, they are numbers, of course, so mm. probably there are, are facts out there. Yeah. But from the look of things, I think we have a lot of uh, losses, as yeah. well as Tongas and Bembas as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
and some fresh from the east maybe Raku East gets more aggressive for most. All Easterners are all Easterners are one. Eh? Yeah, because also if we start segmenting the Sengas, the Chewas, the Ngonis, the Tumukas. Some reason my mic is like <laughs> I can't really seem to figure out that. Okay. Yeah, almost yeah. to my tribe is talking East to Ja. Mm. Fuck our one one. Yeah, we are just minorities. Mm. Yeah, but I think Lozis have got a huge number: Tongas and Bimbas. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that would be something interesting to look at the actual numbers, eh? To know what. Tell us what you guys. Do you know think. that in Rwanda it's illegal to ask someone's tribe. Ah, uh, yeah, because of the history, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank God we're in Zambia. So yeah, um, tell us what you guys think. Which tribe do you think has the largest population? This actually has been an issue over centuries. You know, this is time for our Bible les- our Bible talks lesson. Um, in the Bible, there is a story of David taking a census of of israel mm. and god got upset he said how dare you count my armies <laughs> <laughs> and god killed about seventy thousand of them oh, okay. yeah so it's always been an issue to try and look at populations of groups even yeah, though we but, do census in zambia but yeah and the other mm. thing is that here in zambia i think that there's a lot of uh we're interconnected you know so you find that someone has got uh uh, Lozi lineage as well as t- uh, Tumbuka lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone's mother is Tumbuka. The other, the the father is uh, Lozi or Tonga or Bemba. So, yeah. you know, I think that here in Zambia we are just kind of we have, of course, our issues with our tribes and our ethnic groups, but I feel like we are we are sort of united, you know, yeah. and proud of our differences. Yeah, I think that's what actually unites us. It's one of the things. Because as you said, at the traditional ceremonies, you find at the Kuomboka, you find everyone and yeah. they're dressed like noses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. we are probably. Oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. We had Mr. Lungu, yeah. Edgar Chagwalungu, uh, dressed as a as a lozi. And we had the president, the almost say Dr. Hakainde, Mr. Hakainde Hichilema, also dressed uh, in the same uh, attire. So yeah, as as Chofia is saying, we don't really have that. As a matter of fact, I think in our age group, even when we are looking for uh, partners, either a a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever you guys want might want mm. to call it, we don't really think of like ah, this one is from this part of the country. So yeah, I'll go for I'll go for her or I'll go for him. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Do do you think people in our age group do that? I don't think so. They don't. Uh, they don't. Maybe it's, it's more of our so, parents that would have yeah, done that so, in their time. Yeah. So of course, even for ourselves, we can't say that uh, we can speak entirely for everyone because yeah, 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 yeah. There could be some people. They, they could have, be some. Yeah, yeah. yeah some yeah. people is because of some personal experiences. Yeah. Some people is because they are uninformed. Would you, if you were heartbroken, for example, by someone, would you in any way attribute it to their tribe? That would be for, stupid. For me. any reason. That would be stupid. <laughs> it would? <laughs> to me, yeah. Uh, are you aware, anyway, that this is a subject, obviously, that's very sensitive. So let's not get into details about no, it. No, let's see. We, we talk about sensitive things here. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Anyway, so um, there are certain tribes and traditions and cultures that would, for example, teach. Uh, let me not say teach, but it it would. it's not a strange thing mm. for a boy to first see uh, the first girl he's... <sighs> Should I really please, be talking about say, this? Please, my friend. If it's there, it's there. Yeah, anyway. Mm. Uh, so certain tribes, certain groups of people, mm. it's not strange for um, a boy's first encounter with a naked girl to be a cousin. Okay. Yeah, and what that does is it kind of, I think, to an extent, mm. desensitizes people whether both guys and girls to the extent that there is a certain, that's what I feel. There's a certain irreverence with which they'll treat sexual matters. It's like children that are born in a polygamous home. Mm. Are maybe, people still doing that by the way right now? Uh, I think so. I, I, I would like to think so. Um, it's like children who are born in a polygamous home. If you then see them uh, showing signs of promiscuity, it wouldn't be so strange because the example they had, I don't know if you understand. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> the thing that the thing is that, uh, so uh, promiscuity and polygamy, mm. to me, they could be different things. Yeah? Yeah. Promiscuity is something which is uh, uh, sort of, uh, how can I say, 
uh, indecent. Hmm. Meanwhile, polygamy is not something that uh, has ever been considered indecent. Yeah. By who's in the it? times that it was being practiced uh, rapidly. Right now, it is because we've been we've been fed with a lot of stuff. So we see polygamy as being promiscuous. Do you know what I would uh, suggest? That maybe we have a basis mm. for why we believe what we believe. Mm. That influences a common ground, kind mm. of. Mm. Um, for some people, they derive their beliefs from tradition. Mm -hmm. For some people, they derive their beliefs from the Bible. So when you, when you say that, mm -hmm. what are you basing? What are you deriving your views from? When you say uh, polygamy is not considered. So maybe I can still ask you the same question. When polygamy was being, uh, was being practiced mm -hmm. a lot here in our country, uh, were, were people taking that from their religious beliefs or their traditional beliefs? Where did they base that on? Why is it that it was mm. normal for people to have three wives in some traditions? Mm. Yeah. Right now, some people, we have some, Just some speak closer to your mic. Sorry. We still have some Tongas who are still polygamous in polygamous marriages. Yeah. We have a lot of Tumbukas who are still practicing that, mm. even up to now. Some mm. people are actually living in the city, if you don't know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what we are now, I'm talking about those times. Mm. What were they basing the, the polygamy on? Mm. Before I answer your question, mm. I would say, are you aware that in some countries, women are not allowed to drive in, yes. pre in present day? Uh, I know that uh, until recently in, uh, in, in some countries in the Middle East, mm. people are not uh, allowed, <laughs> women are not allowed <laughs> to drive, yeah. as well as even going to like stadiums, mm. all those public places. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, okay, yes, so I've answered your question. Yeah. Or have I? You have, uh, would that make their tradition right? It could be right in their eyes. They could have reasons for it. As a matter of fact, there's some countries in this world mm -hmm. presently mm -hmm. where a woman can be divorced by repeating one word. Mm -hmm. When you send a text message with the repetition of that word, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you, if you know. I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. Then you have dismissed her. Mm -hmm. That's why in those cultures, you'll find that uh, when a husband brings a wife into the home, mm. he needs to keep her a treasure box where he deposits gold and all manner of precious metals or mm. uh, jewelry so that when she, he dismisses her, if ever he dismisses her when he decides to, mm. she will have somewhere to start. So my point is this, the mm. fact that we had traditions back then, and I think this is my problem with a lot of people that advocate for Africa. Mm. I believe in advocating for Africa. I love Africa. I'm an African. Except I don't think because our forefathers practiced certain things that they are all right. And that's why I am a strong believer in civilization. Civilization means developing new ways of, or learning new ways. You're, 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 you're organizing yourselves in better ways, right? And I think uh, certain cultures place women beneath men, like polygamy. Because don't we frown upon polygamy right now? We do, and that, like this generally is, speaking, um, not everyone does. Yeah, major, yeah, majority, generally majority do, yeah. and that's the point I was raising. As I've I just to spoken with. to you, that polygamy now it's been almost equated to promiscuity. No, that's not what you said, sir. What you say? said mm. there is no culture where polygamy is equated to promiscuity. No, no, because that's, I, because that's I compared. What I said. Okay, you didn't say it in the exact words, uh -huh. but that that was your point because I no, compared the two. Okay. I said children who come from a polygamous home are likely to be promiscuous. Mm. Or, or let me not say that. I'll say it's not strange if mm. you find a child from a polygamous home behaving mm. with uh, traits of promiscuity, and you said how can you link polygamy to promiscuity? Not in the exact words, mm. but in a nutshell. Okay, so anyway, my point is that if I said it in another way, this is this was my point that uh, you see, being polygamous and uh, being promiscuous, I think those are two different things. From when polygamy started, those have been two different things. But now we sort of equate them, yeah, because of what we look at prom uh, uh, polygamy to be. We mm. frown upon polygamy, so we sort of think that those who are I think you've just done a U-turn. How? Oh, anyway, go on. <laughs> How? That was my point from the start. It was? Yeah. Okay. Mm. But yeah. anyway, uh, there's one point again that I shouldn't forget that uh, 
you I remember you mentioned that people of our age yeah. uh, don't care about the tribes. Yeah. Yeah. But also we can't take away from the fact that the, the old folks as well actually counter the program when we gained independence mm. of saying if your surname is Sampa, they will send you to Tumbuka land. Mm. If your surname is Rubinda, Mm. They will send you maybe to Tonga land or to the opposite. And this is how come we have these intermarriages, yeah. which turned out to be these same things where myself, I can be Tumbuka, this side I'm Lala, yeah, this yeah, side I'm yeah, Bemba. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which, yeah. which I very much so. appreciate. I think that was a, a good way of dealing with it. Yeah. He, he's the one that coined Wanzamiyo Nation, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Mm, which, was, also, which was also under the same ideology, right? Yeah, but also we can't also say that that was such a great thing because there were yeah. a lot of things that was happening. You know, <laughs> you know, when someone comes to you and tells you today, you guys, we are one Zambia. You've got one president. Oh, uh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. That's another issue. I understand. Yeah. I understand. So the one Zambia, one nation came with those kind of undertones, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Anyway, we have actually Degrees. before we yeah get ahead of ourselves. Uh, you know, I keep looking in the other camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are discussing uh, not too many things on the show today, but we're discussing a number of things. By the way, please do subscribe, hit that bell, and share. Um, we are yeah. To start with, we're going to talk about um, the four features that we are reigning upon us last okay. week <laughs> and then we're going to discuss the pf ordering ordered rather to pay uh mr kalandanya walia kalandanya the proprietor of kalandanya music promotions 13.5 million for the 2021 campaign songs which uh the country wasn't happy about so this is like just i didn't even know that they were not paying guys can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Then uh, finally, we will discuss the Komboka ceremony um, and everything that happened surrounding uh, the said ceremony. I feel like we've already talked about it. Yeah. yeah in uh, in in wait, did we talk about the Komboka on camera? Mm? We did. Eh? No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah? Oh, it was prior to. That's how you started. Oh, I said it by oh okay mm, okay. You, said, you actually said you saw me. The combo. Yeah, yeah. Did you say you saw me. Or you I, asked. I say I said I saw you. Then no. you said uh, I was watching on TV. Then power went to where I was watching from. Serious? Yeah. Imagine. Oh, they actually aired on TV. Oh, it was on ZNBC. Yeah. Ah, no wonder. So they started showing. No wonder it. I didn't know ZNBC. And yeah, don't don't don't. Say. We know ZNBC is not so great, but let not that be your excuse. Uh, I just don't know anyone apart from you in my age group who watches ZNBC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important to watch ZNBC. You think so? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, how else are you going to be ahead of their game if you don't know what they are planning? Because, you know, they always show themselves up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, last week it was raining for features. The National Prosecution Authority uh, called to task a number of high profile individuals um, and demanded for, for features. The National Prosecution's Authority has announced that it has recovered $30.9 million in for features from multiple high profile cases in the last one month. Among those involved in the said cases include former KCM provision liquidator. Milingolungu, Adeo Michael Botros, and other parties that were involved in the gold scam at Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, among others. In a statement, NPF public, NPA rather, public relations officer Charlie Hambai says in diverse cases involving mostly foreign nationals, the director of Pro public prosecution, what's going on, Gilbert Peary also secured for features totaling $1.8 million, 32,000 euros, 8,100 and 39 British pound and 100 and 1,320 kwacha. I don't know why they didn't group all figures. Um, uh, I, do, I don't know why they didn't group all figures into one and just tell us one figure like they did with the 30.9 million. They had to break down each currency. So did someone forfeit 1,320 kwacha? I don't know what, <laughs> what this means. Yeah, but I anyway, that's what it means. That's what it means. Eh? Mm. Yeah, but the, those were the f for features that happened. Uh, people were giving up money. It was a sad week for some rich people, and 
in line with the same news, we know that former president Edgar Lungu's daughter as well. I didn't even know that he had this daughter. Um, Chieso. That's her name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Chieso Lungu has um, forfeited 9 million kwacha as well to the state. Another Lungu. <laughs> Apart from Mr. Milungo Lungu, who has, of course, forfeited 27 million uh, uh, to the 24? 24 million, 24 million to the state. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, there was also the the that uh, that that thing that scandal, gold charge and scandal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, those guys have forfeited five million yeah. uh, dollars, but they've but been they, given back their plane. Yes, their yeah. jet. Yeah. Yeah, well, which is kind of hypocritical somehow if you look at it critically. Anyway, well, why? Yeah, because you know, in Zambia, <laughs> if they catch you uh, with the vessel truck, you're smuggling stuff. Yeah, or you're doing criminal stuff or illegal things. They said, "Hey, how much stuff on skate?" Oh yeah, they they and they don't yeah. even compromise on that. So and they now, and they auction it to government workers. Eh? I don't know what they do, but uh, I know that they always seize. Yeah. Yeah. So now that it's a foreign national and it's a jet, mm. <laughs> it was nice to see that test. So anyway, I think what's what stood it. out for me in all this was the excuse that, for example, uh, Edgar Lungu's daughter gave when she said uh, the properties that were repossessed, mm -hmm. it was the her father who helped her acquire, which was kind of like an excuse she was giving in order to legitimize them. So you think it's 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 a lame excuse? Um, I don't think it's a lame excuse. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting fact. Okay. The reason why I think it's an interesting fact is because uh, I don't know whether we'll see an end to these uh, fingers that are being pointed back in one direction whether something will eventually be done about that or all will see to that effect are repossessions. I know the complication that comes with that, but it just, it's just very interesting. Mm -hmm. It feels like, wait, are these guys escaping right under our nose? Uh, yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I do, but uh, so are you saying that you think that uh, we're letting people score free? Are not no, to be to be fair, they are giving up a lot of money. So, yeah. so also to be fair, you cannot know if that's all the money. No, I, that's why I did. Like say, I us, said a lot of money, but maybe not all the money. It's very possible mm -hmm. that they have money outside. It's yeah. very possible. Yeah. So to me, it looks like two things. Yeah. First of all, it could be that we are making deals with people who are doing criminal activity. Okay. Yeah, because. You have someone who, because, you know, if they, so the other thing that is there is that when they find you with such property, they don't have to see where you store. Mm. They just have to see that you are filled to prove that you made the kind of money to acquire this property. Uh-uh. If you to Uh-huh. So when I, it's not in their job to show. This actually was said, uh, with the Austin Liato case, when they found two know, million kwacha yes, buried, exactly pre rebased the yes. uh, yeah. <clears throat> so from then they said that eh, we don't have to prove to you that we found here where you store. You, if you fail to prove where you got the money from, then it will my problems. Yeah. So to me, I feel like uh, it would have been important if these these cases could be could go up to the the courts mm. and then sort it out. Mm. So that if people are really guilty, they go to prison. Yeah, but but to be fair, because I also do think that it's a good way to avoid spending more resources pursuing these people and see, giving uh, them a bit more mm. uh, space to mm. come up with ways. You're right, but the other problem is that if we keep on doing that, it, there are a lot of people who will be stealing and then eh, they will be thinking that eh, they will just end up with these deals. Because mm. these are out of court set Have you ever heard... Uh, Bemba proverb by one Martin Luther King. Mm. As Martin Luther said, uh, I don't think, I think people can't bank on the lack of others, but it's a risky thing. 
<laughs> because that day mm. that is when you find that they are prosecuting so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you see uh when we are discussing these issues because these uh the, our laws are there also to deter people yeah from doing yeah, this. yeah 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 anyway i said two things so the second thing could actually be victimization could be that they are seeing that these cases they don't have they are not holding any what Oh, that's a possibility. So they end up agreeing eh, to forfeiture. That's a possibility. Yeah. That is a possibility. So it could be it's that. A slim possibility. Edgar Lungo's yeah. family is being persecuted. Yeah, maybe they He's are. being persecuted. They are just innocent sheep being led to the slaughter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, so uh, that's why it leaves a, a lot of gray areas. Mm. These out of court settlements. And then for the Milingo issue as well, there was, uh, there was an issue that time. Yeah. When we heard that there was an apparent meeting. Yeah. with high-ranking government officials, yeah. including the DPP himself. Mm. And then those ca- even the president actually refused. that. There was I, nothing I remember, like that. yeah. Just, just after they came into power. Yes. Mm. So now that we've got this, that they've, <laughs> they've agreed to have a deal. Wait, he still also, had money? <laughs> <laughs> because also the other thing is that uh, this issue is... Uh, like, we can't know the exact intricacies, the details of those settlements. Yeah. So that's another issue in its own as well. Yeah. Um, interesting enough, you wouldn't want to know what will be happening to the properties that they got from what's the name again? Chieso? Mm. Yeah. What the, the properties they got from Chieso Lungu. Uh did you know that the president had a daughter named Chieso? Chieso. Yeah. I during heard, during his presidency. I uh, no, no, no. Or or you just knew it now as well. Not really upper. Huh? We only knew of Dallas and uh, and 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 Tassila, right? I only uh, knew Tassila myself. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, so you wouldn't want to know what they will do with the properties that they have repossessed from GSO. Take a look. Because according to the Forfeiture of Process of Crime Act, when we profit property, it should be used to ensure that dispensation of justice is done. You know, we have a crisis of uh, the junkies. We, we call them the street kids. We want to build rehabilitation centers. We want to build homes for victims, gender-based crime women. So it would be one of those things which this would be used for because we want to ensure that we take the property from the wrong hands and put them back to society so that society benefits from the process of crime. Yeah, so that society benefits from the proceeds of crime um at this point we are assuming that uh, it's not an assumption anyway at this point it's established that, that these funds and properties were proceeds of crime i no, i think actually she's I, using wrong english they are not really established for the repossession to happen for feature so those are those are out of court settlements we don't know that's why i was saying that we don't know the actual details of the discussions yeah yeah so it could be that they found that, eh? mm. as you are saying, that eh? they were, it could actually save us time and money. Yeah. So it could be that's the thing that happened. They saw that the Kwamene end up waste more resources if we try to find out if it's really criminal. Yeah. This, so this they are just suspecting. This statement, uh, the Diamond TV reported it this way. The state has, <laughs> taken, po- has taken possession of former President Edgar Lungu's daughter, Chieso's properties worth over mm. 9 million mm, for, for being... For being does this mean they were reporting inconclusive? Yeah, I don't know. What I thought is that they were just suspected. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, according to these people, it seems it's an established matter that these are processes. Yeah, of because crime. even the but, way she said it. Yeah. 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 Mm. So funny, <laughs> they are going to turn them into, and she's excited. No, yeah, she the public excited. needs to benefit from the proceeds of crime. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she seemed so excited. I noticed. Uh, did you see the picture of Mr. Milingo Lungu? Mm. He doesn't seem too amused. Yeah, it seems like an old picture anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, uh, well married with the, <laughs> with the situation he's going through. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and in another news of uh, payments, huge payments, large sums of money, the Patriotic Front has been ordered by the High Court to pay uh, Mr. Walia Kalandanya uh, the proprietor of Kalandanya Music Promotions, 13 point, 13 million rather, <laughs> I'm looking for the point here, <laughs> 13 million uh, because the campaign songs that he did 
on their behalf in 2021. I am sure you guys remember the Yo Maps of this world, the Slap D's of this world. Who else? Was? Well, you had to call them out. Eh? Oh yeah, it's we we remember. The beast, the <laughs> we have not forgotten. <laughs> At uh, Julius Malema, what did he say? He give us a give signal. Us a, <laughs> give us a sign, Mama. Uh, uh, give us a sign, Mama. Well, no, we have not forgotten. <laughs> uh, yeah, they sang some songs for the Patriotic Front, um, and apparently, so I don't know how true the rumors were that mm. were flying around. Oh no, your maps got one million. Oh, no, <laughs> maybe Mr. Kalandania was indeed paying them from his pocket, uh, in a, in the hopes that <laughs> the Patriotic Front will mm. pull through. I mean, given the musicians that were involved <laughs> in the whole plot. Well, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it didn't pan out that way. Mm. And now he's calling for his money. This was a bad investment on Mr. Kalandania's part uh, to invest in, what does the Bible say? Some trust in horses, some trust in the PF, but we trust <laughs> in the name of the Lord. Yeah, so <laughs> he's been ordered to pay back this money. And I don't know whether he's going to receive this money, honestly. I thought PF had money. Yeah, yeah because, to... because also, which, that time which PF? This which PF yeah, is going very, to be? That is very interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah, because we've got two PFs. Or oh, one legitimate one. One, yeah, one legitimate one. It's none, none of whom he sang about. They, uh, he, they, he did songs for, right? What do you mean? The new PF. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any member of the new PF that was, uh, uh, that had a song dedicated to them. How many people of the old PF had the had songs dedicated to them? If not only Ed Garungu and the mm. Esther. <laughs> it, I, I mean, the songs were for the PF generally, for everyone standing under the yeah, ticket. Yeah. But under the new PF, was anyone standing under yes. the ticket? We have a lot of people who are MPs in parliament. Oh, under the new PF? Yes. Oh, okay. So anyway, they are <laughs> going to have to agree to pay, I guess. Uh, that would be very interesting. It's a good conundrum, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... Um, uh, this past weekend, we had the Komboka ceremony. A lot of stuff happened prior to the Komboka uh, mm -hmm. ceremony. Mm -hmm. We got an announcement from the BRE, which is the Barose uh, Royal Establishment, telling us that this year, the guest of honor at the ceremony would be the, the Chiti Mukolo. Um, and Mr. Chifaya here tells me that the same happened at the yeah, actually, in that picture, the, the the bottom picture there, yeah, where they are sort of confiding in each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the Kusefia Pangwe. Ah, uh, so uh, in this case, the Litunga was the guest of honor. Was the guest of honor. The yes. Litunga is the is the one that's that's uh, or that has the white. Yeah, um, yeah, the one who looks well to do. Then the one who looks poor is the. Uh, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 members. I wasn't really going to say that at all. <laughs> Have you heard some of the praises they shout as they are going approaching the Chitimukulu? I haven't seen it in mm. in person, but I I hear. Mm. I've had friends who stay who've stayed in Kasama and whatnot. Mm. You were in Kasama recently, weren't you? <laughs> Kasama. Oh no, no, sorry, that wasn't you. <laughs> yeah, I wish though. Apparently, I wish. I wish I was in Kasama. Apparently, it's black and white in Kasama, and they still use money for encounters time. <laughs> yeah, and so um, it it was a bit of an anomaly because, as expected, the president would be the guest of honor at such events, but eh, no, he wasn't. And um, Mr. Cornelius Mwetwa came out to speak to that effect. Um, to talk about how the president will actually be at the ceremony, which obviously wasn't taken well by the BRE, or let me not say by the BRE, but by representatives of the BRE, Mr. Cornelius. I think that uh, my job is to announce where the president will be. And this Saturday, he will be gracing the Kumboka ceremony. I speak for the president and his government. I don't speak for any other person. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So I know you gave a bit of some context, but let me mm. just add on. Mm. So, you know, after the, because the invitation was, uh, they announced the BRE on the 2nd of April. Mm. So that's at the beginning of the month. So when they announced that, because also, and this is something that I would like to say that, you know, politicians, politicians can be dangerous and politicians can divide us. 
and th- this thing of tribes and ethnic groups is a very fertile ground. Mm. So when uh, Hakainde spoke about uh, uh, there's no country called Barcelona, mm. and then uh, we saw that just immediately afterwards uh, they invited the to the the Chitimpulu to come and be the the mm. the guest of honor. A lot of people took it as a sort of rebellion, you know. It was response to the yeah, presence. exactly, yeah. yeah, like response, yeah. But as you mentioned, <clears throat> the the Litunga was also the the thing the the guest of honor at the Kusevia Penguin. Mm-hmm. But also there was also other political connotations to that. Yeah, in case you don't know, because there was a time that HH was campaigning in uh, I think 2021 or 2020 in Bembaland, mm-hmm. and he wanted to meet the Chitimkuru. Mm-hmm. And because it was so heated up that time, the Chitimkuru refused to meet him. Ah. So after he was president, there was uh, a bit of people thought that there would be bad luck. There was an elephant. Exactly. Mm. And then immediately also, they called the Ritunga to be the guest of honor. By the way, it was the first time. Mm. So the members actually did them first, did it first, mm. except that their traditional ceremony, Nikangono Maningi. Okay. <laughs> 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 By the way, please do subscribe, hit that bell, and share. Yeah. yeah, especially if you're enjoying what we're talking about. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then these now also they did a return invitation, mm. but also at a time where there are those political undertones. So I just want us to be po- to be to be careful with that because politicians will use whatever they have. Yeah. Within their power. Yeah. To make sure that they divide and rule. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I think that the, the, the invitation was very significant. And then afterwards, the people who started talking, who started saying, no, we've never seen a, a traditional ceremony like Wombuka having someone else being the guest of honor. Mm. So the president shouldn't even go there. People are talking. Mm. So that's why uh, Cornelius Mento came out like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually it was a press briefing and the journalist asked the question mm. to say, we've had all these discussions. Is the mm. president going to go to the Kombok? Mm. And that's how he said that. Now, even when he said that, some people misconstrued and thought that he says that eh, the president will be the guest of honor. Mm. <laughs> exactly. That he's going to execute his powers over the ceremony. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, in uh, response to Mr. Mwetua's statement, mm. activists from the BRE, zealous, I must add, uh, had this to say. It is a great disappointment and shameful that despite BRI making things clear, recently on Monday that our guest of honor is Paramount Chief Chitmuku, President Hakainde Chilema still went ahead to announce through Konolias Mwetwa that it's him to grace the Komboka ceremony. Bulozi, Bulozi, therefore, it's difficult really to understand what the president is up to because his actions does not speak humility but language of dictatorship. We have intelligence information that President Hakainde has threatened BRI and the Litunga, forcing them to be a guest of honor and commanding BRI to remove Chitimukuru on the position of guest of honor. Yeah, I believe uh, one thing that our brothers and sisters from the West pride themselves in is their levels of education. We believe these are very intelligent gentlemen and ladies, of course. Um, How they misunderstood what Mr. Cornelius Mwetwa said still bites me. I'm shocked by the gross, the gross misconstruing of Mr. Cornelius Mutwa's words. By the way, the BRE uh, distanced themselves from these zealous activists, even though they went on to reinforce the same words. The BRE is delighted to restate and reaffirm that the guest of honor at this Gomboka ceremony will be Paramount Chief Chitimukuru, the Mwine Rubemba Kanyanta Manga II. We wish to extend the usual road welcome to him and his entourage as they arrive on Thursday, 18th, June, uh, 18th April 2024. Um, they maintain that, they maintain that indeed it will still be Chitimukuru. 
uh, that would be the, the the guest of honor. And I think the only reason you would have to reemphasize that is if you feel threatened by the president's coming. <laughs> you yeah. think so? I think so. Yeah, yeah, you could be right, but also, you know, because there was a lot of discourse, so probably they were just trying to clear the air. Yeah? Yeah. Clear the air of the fear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah so but uh, notwithstanding the whole country um I'll, I'll use that as a i'll use that loosely was very excited and happy to see these two um traditional leaders these two uh they're kings right uh they're paramount chiefs paramount the, the chiefs. Lozi is called the Lozi king of course yeah okay so these um these paramount chiefs uh together uh, in one place happening for the first time was a marvel. People were happy about it. Everyone was happy. Everyone was posting. Uh, everyone had content <laughs> mm. <laughs> to suddenly post. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good thing as well. I, I, I feel very good to see that. Uh, it's, it's, I think the first time that we've seen it, at, uh, it's at a Komboka uh, mm. because Komboka is one of the, like the biggest ceremonies that we have. Yeah. Except with the climate change, we've had a lot of hiccups, such that the Nkwala is almost taking over. Yeah. Yeah. But the Kumboka has always been like the number one. Do you know the yes. interesting thing? I have a couple of colleagues that went to the uh, Nchwala, as we Lusaka people say, mm. um, and what they came back with was saying, uh, actually, us and a large group of those that went to the ceremony did not go to watch anything we actually did not even go to the mm -hmm. they were just by the roadside mm -hmm. doing brides mm -hmm. and drinking their alcohols mm -hmm. so isn't that a, okay so to me I, it sounds like a good thing. here's here's my here's my point mm. i genuinely think people are no longer going to traditional ceremonies at least a good number of them for the traditional ceremony they are going there for the chill like <laughs> you no, know yeah they're going to chill because of the traditional ceremony the, it, no yeah. it's so like it's, the it's a reason be, it's an mm. excuse it's a reason it's an chill. excuse yeah they like ordinarily had it been a four days holiday mm. but there was a different event altogether happening in the same location mm. that would call for large numbers of people to go mm. the same people would go yeah so yeah we're evolving right yeah so if we celebrate a traditional, a traditional ceremony mm -hmm. and we say this weekend is Komboka, so everyone let's go and drink from uh, Western province mm -hmm. and make brides there. That's a good thing to me. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, mm -hmm. but I'm but just saying I don't think everyone goes there for the purposes of the ceremony. I'm also saying maybe that's another way of celebrating these ceremonies. Yeah. That's the new way. We're evolving. <laughs> <laughs> you were the president of debate club. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so i think that we have Wolfie. yeah but anyway that was a good show that we had yeah. yeah and i think i feel that's what we are zambians we are proud of our own you know we are yeah. proud of our differences but if we allow politicians to come in between yeah zambians are not very proud of their own but maybe proud of our differences um <laughs> State House responded. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> State House responded uh to to all this. Uh this was like the day before the actual ceremony. So this was the day before the actual ceremony. Mm -hmm. yeah? Just to clear the air. Because okay. this discourse continued. Okay. Yeah. So uh State House responded to all this uh just the day before the ceremony. Uh, reaffirming also that the president will actually be at the ceremony and they further went on to tell us that he's an enthusiast uh, that the president has appeared at various ceremonies prior to his public uh, political uh, career and that he's simply an enthusiast of this ceremony so he's going to attend as a citizen and from the pictures that we saw I think he did attend as a citizen I think he was very mature about it in my view I, I don't know what you think. I think so. They just didn't have to tell us it is also a headman. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kind of, yeah. Kind of you you, you right? know spokespersons. <laughs> like, you know. This yeah, but, <laughs> but here's, here's one reason why it may have been necessary. Mm. Um, sometimes some certain people tend to treat the president like he's not Zambian enough or traditional enough or because he's rich, there are certain things that he's not enough. 
Uh, there are certain things that him being an elderly man at his age, he should also be regarded in a certain way. Also, uh, aren't those supposed to be tribal cousins? Or something Kumbas like that. Is, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I think there shouldn't be that level of enmity uh, or implied enmity. Yeah, and I've seen the, the losses and the bimbas are joking that now they are they are mbuyas. They are the new mbuyas. Yeah, they've stolen the bimbas from us. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so yeah, but also I could also add to what you said that um I think the the uh the moves by the president were you know I wanted to use the word mature but then yeah. there there are some things that they didn't do well. Yeah. Yeah. So the way that they arrived at the airport and you know it's also like they were being vindictive like they were showing the people that you know we can be here we are you know we were running the show. Mm. You know? They almost made it a UPND event. You know something that we can't deny about mm. being a president? Mm. Um, it takes such great humility. Mm. It takes strength of character to be able to not show your strength, especially when you're challenged, when you're questioned, when people seem to put you in a position where they are saying, oh, in this territory, I'm greater than you. Mm. And you know that you are. <laughs> the commander in chief of the armed forces mm. of the whole country mm. you need a certain amount of maturity to not show your hand like you know i can actually mm. you know it's good that you say maturity yeah so it means that if you do that it means you feel to be mature enough uh there are many f- factors mm. it's not the president who decides for example his itinerary it's not the president who decides where he lands, where he speaks. All those things are all arranged for the president. So I wouldn't necessarily blame him for how his arrival appears. Mm. It's like blaming the president of, or the way some people were, uh, w- some people would seemingly blame a leader for. Anyway, lost my train of thought. I was I was trying to tie everything to the Samansama case, how that you couldn't blame HH mm-hmm. for Samansama's death because crowds were gathered for his sake do you understand so but what if uh, i hear you mm. but what if as a leader hh says uh okay i've heard that these people are daring us that we can't come with our own people uh, we are now commenting on the samasama case yeah just speak to this we're now commenting on the samasama case because that time hh was in opposition yeah so as their leader if and i'm not saying that's what happened mm. if i'm just giving you a hypothetical example mm. yeah like a hypothetical analogy or whatever you call it if hh sat down and said Let's organize people. Let's mm. book passes for them. Mm. They've, we've been told by the police that I should go there alone. Mm. But I want to show them that I'm the biggest opposition lead. So let's book buses, get people from Kafue, get people from me, get people from Mazabuka, mm. and come and assemble there. Mm. Would we say that he shares some of the blame? Mm. It's If there's an incident like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. we can say that. Yeah, so my point is that as the president, when they were going there to Western province, Mm. He had an opportunity to go there with a lot of humility and be the leader because, as you are saying, there's uh, you have to have some degree of maturity to not show your hand. Mm. So it depends on how you are showing your hand because to people like me, if you are showing your hand in a way that you are there, you are like, yes, I'm the commander-in-chief, you can't stop me from coming here. Mm. To me, it shows you as less of a good leader. I actually think if the president wanted to show his hand, there are so many other ways he can show us. Uh, that is the very least of the things he can do to show us his hand. I you mean what he did? Yeah. I actually mm. think if uh, it's very hard for the president to control who follows him. So I'm not, I'm not talking says. about the like the crowds that were there with receiving him. Mm. I've got no problem. I know that. Mm. To me, I've got a problem if at the airport, you make a whole rally. You make the youth chairperson of UPND speak, the secretary, the vice secretary general, mm. the minister of Shani, the MP of Shani, the mayor of Shani, the president himself, to have sort of a political rally. Mm. And in I that think poli- they are, they are well and, their and, right. And in that political rally, you are saying things like, uh, you know, we know that there are some bad eggs here. Yeah. But you can't stop us from coming here. In fact, this is our place. This yeah. is our stronghold. Were they lying? <laughs> that they got the voice from there, they were not lying. They were not lying that they got the voice from there. But to me, it's the vindictiveness that uh, uh, just put me off. Uh, Otherwise, the whole thing after the words, it was good. I yeah. mean, he behaved like an ordinary citizen. Mm. Of course, a president is not an ordinary citizen. No, no, no. He's yeah. not. 
but he was there and he didn't want to exert that power. No, mm-hmm. he respected that is a traditional ceremony. The Litunga is the main event, and he has invited his friends to be another guest of honor, not mm-hmm. the president, mm-hmm. who is also a chief. They are the main event. He respected that. Mm-hmm. He waited for them. Yes. Yeah, for me, that was good. Yeah. The first part was bad. So to me, it kind of just negates it. Mm. It gets the good thing. I think that was a good show. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments what you think about today's show. Uh, tonight's show, rather. Yeah. I wish I knew what time this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that bell and share. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And we are thankful to everyone that has uh, newly subscribed, everyone that participates on the show. We hope to give you even better content as we go. If you can get us to 1K for starters, then we are going to give you something. <laughs> yeah. Well, he looks like a politician making an empty promise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this one is not empty, trust me. I said you look like a politician. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 that's what a politician would say. <laughs> that it's not empty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing to the gallery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we enjoyed your stay here. We wish we could keep you longer, but we have to go. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.